birthday this week or this coming week. Why they admit it, huh? If you got one, we're going to sing to you. I'll tell you that. We're going to make you stand up. Silence means it's not right. You didn't have a birthday this week, right? <coughs> January. service again and he got back problems. He turned in his back so y'all remember me. He, he said he couldn't even sit down. He turned so bad. No, I'll go. So keep him in your thoughts and prayers. I appreciate him for his endeavor. Okay. Today we're going to talk about the big bang. The big bang. Not the one that they say happened, but the one that's coming. But let's read it now. This either this is the Lord's word or it's not. And I'm convinced with my ever being in my life, it is God's word. So when you read this, remember God gave us these words of instruction, these words of knowledge that we might know ahead of time His plan. We'll read 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with verse 3. Knowing this first, that there may come, no, there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where, when's the Lord coming? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby then the world that was then was, being overflowed with water, perished. The flood, great flood came. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise of the big bang and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Uh, the big bang that we uh, hear of so much today, according to our science books, tell us that was the beginning of evolution. 
Well, the Lord doesn't tell me anything about a big bang. He just said simply that he made the heavens and the earth. And he placed everything therein that was created. The Bible said there was nothing made that was not made but by Jesus Christ. But there is a big bang. We just read about it. Now, we talk about uncertainty of tomorrow. There's a lot of things uncertain. Uh, our president recently went over to North Korea to talk to uh, Rocket Man. So he, they wouldn't blow us up, so to speak, because they have a hand to the nuclear weapons. So does other countries. Folk, I got to tell you, there's going to be a time when there's going to be a big bang. Rocket man's not going to do it to him. God's going to do it. We just read about it in the scripture. It's something that not a might happen, like we hear of the possibility of earthquakes and so forth. A, a great hurricane, which we all familiar with around here. This is not a, a, a maybe so deal. This is something that is certain as life itself about the Big Bang. It's ultimate. Our text foretells it. Look again at verse 10. Read it for what it is. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Now, did I read that right? Everyone in agreement that that's what it says? Do you think the Lord would just put something in this book to fill it up? He was telling us about the future before it actually happened. So the Big Bang is ultimate. Men over the years have proclaimed it. And all through the pages of the Bible we have record that is going to happen. Folks, this warning is not popular. Uh, people call this a doomsday folk. For the Christian, there's no doomsday. Amen. Okay? For the Christian, we're protected. The doomsday is for people that reject the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Men refuse to believe it. We're considered now-minded for believing it. But whether I believe it or not doesn't change it, does it? To not believe something doesn't change it, does it? Now, Noah preached to the people in his day. God called on him to build the ark for the saving of his household. For 120 years he preached that it was going to rain on the earth and cover the earth and be a great flood. People didn't believe it, did they? The whole generation that lived then rejected that message. But that didn't change the blood from coming. Mm -hmm. The Big Bang is a future happening already recorded in the scripture that we have record of. Now you might reject it. The people over in Noah's day, the Bible says, and folks, it just the Lord said it's going to be a repeat. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. As it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot fled from there, God brought destruction and he burned up the city. Because the sodomites had taken over. And God said, I'm tired of it. 
and he burned them up. Is that strong enough, folks? It's not what we think about something. We try to okay something that God has condemned. And you can't do that, folks. Yep. We try to put rainbow colors on it, don't we? Amen. Yep. But folks, the rainbow was given for God made a promise to his people. He would not destroy the earth again with water. And people have polluted, tried to change that to something else. That's against nature. Oh, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen. Somebody said, well, I've got a relative that's let them be that way. I've got relatives that are going to hell because they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And folks, God's going to burn things up. That's what he tells us here. Now, scoffers were back in Noah's day. And the Bible says in verse 3 and 4, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lust. While they're walking after their own lust, they said, Where is the promise of his coming? I've been hearing all my life that Jesus is coming in. He hadn't come yet. Oh, that doesn't change the reality. Yep. Amen. The scoffers did not alter the message. They make fun of it. But folks, God himself is an author of life. He put us here. He made us stewards over a body and a life. And we're going to have to answer one day what kind of steward we've been to what he gave us. God gives us ample warning. Why does God tell us about the, the, the big bang that's going to come? Verse 9, we read again. Folks, remember this. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish. He wants all to come to repentance. Folks, he, he doesn't let us love one. He loves us all. He made us all. But said, God's unfair. No, God's not unfair. Even the details are written in the scripture for everyone to know. There is no excuse not to know. Oh. Neither will you be excused for not knowing. God gave us these 66 books in the Bible many years ago. And then we ask the question why is a big bang coming? One three letter word called sin. S I N. Selfishness. Everybody else know about what sin is? Selfishness. <coughs> the greatest sin that a people can commit is rejection of their maker, even God. Men are rejecting God today. But that's not changing God's plan. The Lord's going to cleanse the earth. God provided shelter. He instructed Noah to build an ark to the saving of his house and he allowed him time, 120 years. <coughs> he provided a shelter for his family. And he preached to other people they should prepare for the coming of the flood. 
They didn't prepare, and they died in the flood. But today, when we talk about destruction that's going to come on this earth, and it's coming. God has provided a shelter for his children. Now, I believe the Big Bang is a long way off. But that don't mean it's not coming. We go a little prophecy at you a moment. Our Lord's going to come back. He's going to gather His together. And the scripture says He's going to rule and reign from the throne of David, which is in Jerusalem. He's going to rule and reign for the period of 1,000 years. That's called the millennial reign of Christ. He's going to rule and reign on this earth. And we can read in the scripture what happens on the earth during that time. You know, amazing to me, amazing to me that during that time when Jesus is the king and ruling on this earth, there's still a group of people that's going to reject him. They become what's called the goat nations. John tells us that when the thousand years are over, Then he saw this great destruction called the Big Bang. That's why the Bible says after the thousand years are over, John said then, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The scripture says we shall dwell with him forever. Ever. It's a long time till that final big bang is coming, but it's coming. It's coming at the conclusion of the thousand years. Because then we see the heavens as they melt. And the Lord says, Behold, I make all things new. So, well, we got a lot ahead for others, don't we? For the Christian, but he's already unveiled it to us. The problem is, is I'm afraid that not everyone has made peace with our Lord as their Lord. Well, that's why we're here today. And we want to introduce everyone to the man called Jesus who gave his life to be our shelter. Now, God protected Noah and his family, his wife, and their three sons and their wives, eight souls total. God protected them in that shelter called the ark. Folks, we've got a greater shelter than the ark that was made from the human body, the body that our Lord bore while he was here on this earth. It's made from the blood of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible says we're redeemed not with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of the Lamb Oh, what greater gift? What greater gift? <coughs> None greater. <coughs> Share with y'all something some of you may have heard partially before, but on my heart I guess again. 
long time ago, 35 years ago next week. My only living son murdered by a guy for his car. He was in my little El Camino that night. His car was in the shop. My car sat there during the, the time of the funeral and all, getting things ready. My son's blood was shed all over. The little El Camino. And I had to get in there and wipe it up, clean it up after five or six days. I thought then of God's son my son's blood wasn't perfect. He had blood just like I got. It came from my father Adam, didn't it? Just like you have. But folks, God's son's blood was perfect. It cleanses us from all sin. <clears throat> it is our shelter, his blood. Oh, that made me think that much more of God, realizing the price that he paid for me. He got the shelter. And he asked only that you trust his son that gave himself in your place. He's already died for your sins. They already paid for them. And if you accept them, you get to spend eternity with him. You don't, yep. you go the other way. You get to make that choice.